Welcome back to RDWorks Learning Lab. Um, here we've got a fairly familiar picture which is the uh, power curve um, for my machine and as you can see um, we've got a fairly linear part there between 10 and 20 percent. Now we used that part last time to try and establish whether or not there was any relationship between depth of cut and grayscale. And this is a picture of the grayscale that we used. Now we started off with white at one end and black at the other and we took very conveniently some 50 grayscale steps in between. And at the end of that um, I took some measurements and what we see in blue underneath there are the depths of cut that we managed to achieve by using I think it was 50 millimeters a second and we were using that range of 10 to 20 percent power. So one has to assume that zero was nothing at all, no power, and then we started off at 10% for the 0.7 and 20% for the 2.5. So those are the depths of cut that we achieved, which was uh, quite a remarkable achievement for a first attempt. It definitely shows that the power is changing in some way relating to the grayscale number. And here we can see the results of what we've got in a much more understandable fashion. The red line would be perfection. Uh, we didn't get perfection but we weren't far off with our blue line as you can see. It's a fairly linear relationship. So I think we've proved beyond any doubt that we can actually vary the power more or less directly re in relationship to the grayscale that we choose to use. Now when I bought my machine uh, this was a phrase that appeared in the advert and to me it just looked like a lot more of the rather strange Chinglish phrases that they use. Um, when I got into RD Works and found that there were only 16 colours or something like that I was rather disappointed and uh, uh, you know I did remember this phrase but it didn't make any sense but of course now that we've started working in the grey scale and we've found that you can actually cut different depths with different colour of grey then this phrase all of a sudden starts to make sense and it clearly shows that it was planned to be a grayscale cutting machine. Now that gives us great potential for 3D wood cutting. I won't call it engraving because it's not engraving in the true sense of the word. We're almost wood carving with a laser machine. I think the answer is to try and find a picture in my library that maybe we can work with. Now I'm fairly confident that we should not be able to work with the picture in RD Works. So this is where you're going to have to have a completely separate piece of software to prepare the picture before we even put it into RD Works. I've chosen this picture because it is quite contrasty. There's lots of white background and there are shades of brown in here which are going to be quite difficult to separate out. We've got to work out how we're going to tackle this problem now of getting this to grayscale. Now I'm using Photoshop here. Um, you may be using Corel Draw or something like that. You could be using PaintShop Pro. Um, I'm sure most of the tools that are in here will be available in your package. So I'll go through and explain what I'm doing. Um, Perhaps I should say that differently. I'll go through and explain what I'm doing, but I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> so this is typical of me. We're experimenting on the fly. I'm moderately competent at using this package, but I'm certainly not an artist or proficient in any way at all. Now, I know the first thing that I've got to do is I've got to probably go here to image and mode, and then I can choose something called grayscale. And so you sure you want to throw away the colour? Yes, of course I do. So now we've got ourselves a grayscale picture. But hang on, this is 256 shades of grey in this picture. I'm not so sure that the laser is going to be able to respond to every one of these shades of grey. Uh, it would be fantastic if it could. And I do believe that there are machines out there which can. But let's not ask too much of our very simple Chinese machine to start with. There are some other opportunities that we've got for simplifying this picture. Let's just have a look for a minute. I believe they're hidden in adjustments. 
Yes. Hiding down at the bottom here, we've got something called posterize. Posterize basically enables us to choose levels of grey. How many levels of grey? Well, look, at the moment it's set it automatically to four levels of grey. So we can take a look at this picture and we can see white, dark grey, light grey and black. And they're the only four levels of grey that we've got in there. I think we could probably go a little bit more ambitious than that. Uh, what should we try? Let's try 10 and see what that looks like. Well, that's not bad. I mean, it looks almost like a realistic picture and we've got that from just 10 levels of grey. So that's a lot of picture for very little. Dare I push it any further or should we start off with 10 levels? Let's, let's keep it simple and stay with 10 levels and see what we get. Now, the next thing we've got to deal with is all these various depths of grey that we've got in this picture. So what I want to do is to take a look at image adjustments and we've got something in here called levels. Now what we can do is to fiddle around with these and we can mess around with these and we can change the quality of this picture. So let's just fiddle around and you can see as we pull this one down it makes it darker. Now that's not what we want I don't think. If anything we want to make it lighter to reduce the contrast between some of these pieces. So that's far too light because we've lost the profile of his head. So we look at there his left ear and his eyebrow. Um, we're looking for some sort of definition around his head because that's the key feature in this picture. If nothing else we'd like to see if we can get some definition into the head. Uh, I don't think we shall have much joy here with this body because these it's, it's not a very well defined um, part of the picture. Now I notice there's a very light bright spot on his ear there and over his eyebrow which will come out. Um, that'll stand out quite brightly I think. Can we do anything to mute that? Well we're making the picture lighter but we're still keeping the definition in the picture. We're reducing the differences in the shades of grey. And then we're taking taking the contrast out of the picture which is not such a bad thing. These are still quite heavily different. Now I wonder whether, look on his collar there, we've got this L and O against a white background. Now I don't know whether I should be able to pull that out and see that as detail. We could fiddle around with that for ages. Uh, there's only one way to find out what we're doing <laughs> and that's to save it and to transfer it into now RD Works. We'll crop it fairly closely around his head because that's the key feature here. So we've got his foot in the picture here. It'll uh, be interesting to see whether that comes out in any way, shape or form. So we'll import this. And we'll see what size it is. It's quite a large picture. Um, I'm going to reduce this to about 50 millimeters square for a good reason that I will point out to you in a minute. So about it's not far off square anyway so we go up here and put these aspect ratio thing on and then we'll change this to 50. Now I'm not going to use this thing up here called the bitmap handle because I don't want to make any modifications to that picture initially. I want to leave it as is. Now if you look carefully at it you can clearly see there are blotches of grey. It is definitely a, a limited grayscale picture a suppressed grayscale picture. So let's have a look see what we've choices we've got here when we uh, do use the parameters. Is, the, is an output? Yes. Speed? Well when we did the test we were cutting at 50 millimeters a second. I think I'm going to be cutting into actually into hardboard 
Um, so I'm going to drop this to about 40, I think. Uh, it's a scan mode. Now we've got all this stuff in this advance here, which I'm not going to mess around with at the moment. I'm busy trying to investigate what these things mean. So we're just leaving this as is. The one thing we do need to do is go here to output direct because we need to use this picture as it is. And I believe the output direct just tells exactly what it says. We could change the interval, which is the distance between the lines that we're going to scribe across. But I'm using a, a 38 mil lens, which produces a very fine image. But when I'm cutting wood, I think it will burn either side of it. And 0.1 will probably do a reasonable job. So I'm not going to change that. The finer that I make that, the bigger the file will be. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Power. OK, we're going to drop that to about 9 because I know that 10 is what was on my picture. But I think the laser will work down to probably around about 8 and probably be linear down to 8. So OK, maybe we'll go down to 8. Let's try that. And we'll go up to possibly 25. Little bit pushing it just a little bit out of the um, the linear range, which was 10 to 20. But I'm going to try and push it as deep as I can with as much power as possible. We don't need number two in because we haven't got two lasers. And well, we'll save it and go and have a look, see what we can produce. Well, here we are at the machine, and uh, what I'm showing you proudly here is a, a wonderful bargain I picked up the other day. As you can see, for £1.20, which I suppose for those in the States is probably, what, about um, $2 maybe? Perhaps a little bit less. I picked up these 6 millimeter thick hardboard wheels. Now, these were from an educational shop and this was in their surplus to requirements bin and I just couldn't couldn't resist having something like this just to use on the machine and they are wonderfully dense and uniform in their makeup they're just the perfect thing for doing this grayscale test because the depth of cut should be very predictable I mean some of you guys are used to working I suspect with decent quality hardwood now, I've always been a metal man myself, although I do love wood, but it has got a very unpredictable nature. So I've just locked it in place with some little magnets so that it doesn't jump around. Now, it's rather interesting that I've loaded the file in and it's just showing as a blue square. There's no picture there at all. Now, this does mean to say that we're going to have a hole in the middle of our picture, but I'm sure we can live with that. This is good, we're getting some definite shape. I'm almost excited. For our first attempt at 3D carving, this looks pretty damned interesting. I can definitely do this to it. I don't think there's any doubt about that. We've definitely got some 3 d there now, quite a lot. Um, I'm not saying it's the best picture in the world but uh, that may well be because we've only got 10 levels of grey in the picture. Maybe it will work better if we change the grey levels to maybe 20. Let's see what difference it makes.
I've fiddled around with various things here. Uh, this particular one, which is not bad, if you look carefully around the edges here you'll see that it's a different shape. That's because I managed to pull the whiteness up a little bit on here and so the white is actually true white and at this top level here. You probably watched me machining these and as you can see there's quite a lot of depth to them these these are done at different speeds these these were 10 levels and 20 levels and if we turn them around to catch the light because we've got low sunlight here so we can get a bit of an idea of depth I mean you can definitely see there's a doggy face there so yeah we are definitely doing some wood carving and then I decided I'd go mad and if you take a look at the bottom there you'll see that I did this one with a minimum speed with a minimum power of 9 and a maximum power of 20 I put the machine down to 8 and I wound the power right up to 65% and I managed to nearly burn through the wood here um, it's really gone deep and it was nearly catching fire in the bottom there so I then changed from 40 millimeters a second to 120 millimeters a second to 300 millimeters a second and then to 400 millimeters a second and as you can see as I've got faster the definition has definitely got worse I mean you know there's virtually nothing there there is some definition here at 120 but it's not all that good so when I look at this series across the bottom here where I've got 20 levels and then I've got maximum maximum power basically running at 40, 120, 300 and 400 the picture is getting fainter and I did ask myself the question I wonder whether or not if I change the power right back down again and run the speed really high whether I can do an like a grayscale picture rather than a dot picture whether I can actually do a grayscale picture onto the surface so what I'm going to do now is to put a piece of white material white wood in the machine and we're going to start backing off the power and running some tests to see what we finish up with the question is how do we change or improve that now we found some magic numbers there which give us a, a reasonably good picture um, increase the range slightly the power take it up to 20 percent or do we put the speed up again well, I think when we look at these results we can see that engraving a picture with just varying the power is not necessarily a very good way of producing a good picture because to be honest these are fairly rubbish they're a picture they're a shape I mean that one is about the best that we can see it's very slightly textured and 3D-ish but no I don't think there's anything there that we could say would be you certainly wouldn't want to buy anything like this and that's the criteria upon which you really ought to be judging these well I think you can see that 3D engraving has got some potential but I think to do 3D engraving you've got to choose the right picture it's got to be specifically designed to employ the grey scale and next time I think we'll have a go at creating some pictures that will play to that strength and we'll see whether or not we can have any more success but at the moment I think we can clearly say that cutting pictures trying to create pictures with grayscale lines is not very successful whereas we're going to have more success with 3D engraving thanks for watching see you next time <laughs>